welcome to Cooking in Style with Sarasa. I'm Sarasa. We are at a Trezzi, and on today's menu, we are cooking crab parfait ceviche with avocado tuna salad, and of course, a Sedona guacamole platter. So, let's get started. First, we're cooking crab ceviche parfait. As you guys know, um, you've had crab in many different scenarios, whole crab, crab salad, but what I want to do is reinvent a more delicious Asian, Caribbean type of inspired crab. So this is real whole meat crab and you can find that in your local grocery stores. Um, generally they'll have it in the uh, can, it can be frozen, but you rather do that fresh meat crab versus the imitation. So here I have um, 16 ounce of crab meat and we are going to drizzle with lemon, which is, um, it gives you a really nice, anytime you do seafood, give it some acidity to it and that also helps to give it flavor and cut that, um, the seafood fishy taste away. Half a lemon and a half a lime. What I like to do with this particular dish is make it ahead of time because you do want to put it in the fridge for like two hours and this is going to make the perfect appetizer as your guest is coming over or if you are looking to um, introduce seafood because not everyone loves seafood, but we are in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and this is a seafood town, you guys. So we've gotten that taken care of. And of course, I love to add a little bit of spice. So a jalapeno is always a nice addition. And as you know, I like to squeeze all my lemon and lime juice with this little gadget. It makes it quick and easy. Because um, what we want to do is we want to make cooking fun. It does not have to be difficult. And God forbid you break your nails. All right, so we've got this chopped up. And if you don't like spicy food, you do not have to add the jalapeno. But this particular kind, you can find your local grocery store. This really doesn't give that much of um, like a spicy palate. It gives you more of a, hi, I'm thinking about trying spicy. So I'm gonna just inch my way into this. And I promise you, it will not um, harm your tongue at all. So we've got the jalapeno in here with the lime juice, lemon juice, and now we're going to add a uh, half a tablespoon of pepper, and then some chili flakes, and then I like paprika as well. So a half a tablespoon of that, a little bit of nutmeg, and a little bit of cumin. And if you like it spicy, feel free to do and add a little more. And of course, Himalayan salt is a must. And then for my sweetness, I love to use honey versus sugar because I feel like this has a more health benefit to this dish rather than straight up sugar. And you want some type of like a binding um, agent in this particular dish because most people will make crab with mayo. So I want to teach you not to use mayo. We don't need the calories because we need to keep our waist trim, but introducing you a new palette of different flavor, you can get a salad mayo inspired, but this is a whole lot healthier. Why not eat great and look great? Okay, so I think we need just the other lime, the other half of the lime that we cut up. Squeeze that. This is a great bicep workout. Toss that out. This looks much better. You want like a nice wet consistency because remember, this is gonna sit in the fridge for two hours. You can make it ahead of time before your guest comes over. Um, I like to use both cilantro and scallion. You do not have to use either or. 
I know a lot of my friends actually don't like scallions, but I love these babies. It's always important to add some type of herbs when you're making salad. It just elevates them. Um, it makes your palate a little bit more sophisticated. And be careful when you chop. Mm. I can just smell that like aroma of cilantro. And Caribbean cooking, Mexican cooking, cilantro is a very popular herb that they use. And of course, this is scallion. Chop this up. This is a half of um, a stalk of scallion. And I am using only just the green portion, not the white part. Bam, bam. All right. This is all coming together beautifully. And of course, any cook would know as you go, you taste. So we're just going to see how this is tasting so that we can adjust to our palate. Mmm, 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 mmm. That is delicious. So we've got that aside. Oh, one more thing. If you do like anything spicy, the trick is to always add cucumber or tomato to any of your dish. And I tend to always toss the outside in out. Okay. Chop this up finely, and this is going to go in to our crab ceviche parfait. And this is going to be refreshing, a great starter to any entree. And it wets the tongue. And what's nice is that when you're going over to um, a dinner party or you're in the kitchen cooking your family, you notice that everyone kind of gathers in the kitchen, right? So that's what we kind of want to do is get a starter for them to start on something. You finish cooking. Because you know what? You don't have to have everything all done all at once. So this mix is done. Again, put this in the fridge for two hours. So what I'm going to do is prepare, remember I said parfait. So we are going to present this in a martini glass. We're going to line it up with delicious, sweet kiwi. And then you are going to put the parfait on top of that, the crab ceviche. So line up your martini glass in layers. And I think when you're cooking for someone, it's all about love. It's all about how it looks. All right. So that is one kiwi. What's nice with the flavoring in this particular dish is that you have the sour, the sweet, you have the spicy, you have the savory, and I believe there's a word for that, and it's umami. In the Asian cooking, if you can incorporate all those flavors, flavors, um, you're really going to entice someone to want to stay for entree. And again, when you're cutting, please be very careful. God forbid you have an accident before your friend's family comes over. Voila, a whole kiwi. Go ahead and line that up beautifully. Mmm. Mmm. This is really nice and sweet, and it's got a bit of um, like tangy to this. Oh, I can't wait till my friends try this. There we go. And now, after two hours of in the fridge, we have a one ready to go. And if you want to make this more casual, you do not have to present it in a martini glass. This is um, if you're having like a small get together. If you want to just make a big portion and then put it in a beautiful bowl, then everyone can kind of dig in with crackers, bread, anything that you guys want. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that looks. 
the crab, the cilantro, Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. If this is not a fancy version of crab salad, you guys, I don't know what is. And of course, to top this off, a little bit of cilantro on top. Or you can add any of your favorite toppings. I tend to like cilantro or you can leave it alone. So we're gonna have a little taste. Wow, this looks delicious. Bon appetit. Here is your healthy, beautiful version of a crab parfait, but I promise you this is delicious, quick and easy to make, and I hope you enjoy. Crab has a high content of copper, protein, vitamin B2, and omega fatty acids, which reverse the sign of aging. So, let's get back to the show. Tuna salad. You guys have all had it, but I'm going to show you a quicker, easier, more healthy way to have your tuna salad. So, we're gonna start off with tuna. I like the Bumblebee brand, only because it's just, uh, it's, it's thick and it's more meat and it's just prettier especially when you're adding things into it and start mixing it up remember healthier right so instead of mayo I'm going to introduce avocado and you can buy avocado in your grocery store or I love to kind of cheat a little bit and just buy the guacamole all ready to go it's got the spice so it cuts down your cooking time because if you're in a hurry and you're at home trying to get your kids fed or your uh, boyfriend a sandwich or your husband's hungry, and I just use like a big um, spoon, so two of this is more than plenty. Get that in. And what's nice is that this gives you that creamy consistency. It's going to bind your meat all together. Oh, imagine this. like at in a tuna melt. Delicious. So as we get that all mixed in together, and even the coloring is really pretty. It's like a nice sage green. Oh, it just reminds me of spring. So once we get that going, we are going to add a half of lime. Give it some nice flavor to this. Drizzle that all over. And this gadget I'm using makes it so much easier and you can get the most out of your um, lime juice as well. Okay, and then now we're going to add our pepper, a little bit of pepper flakes for a little kick to the dish, and of course paprika. There you go. Himalayan salt. I think I really like this salt because it's pink and it's so pretty. And now we're going to add cilantro and scallion. And I love just buying like a big stock of cilantro and then putting it in a glass in the water. So that way it stays fresh longer and you can grab it when you need it. And it's right there. And if you don't like cilantro or scallion, you can skip this step. But if you love herbs in your um, tuna salad, you're gonna definitely love the flavor. Get that in there. And my trick when I'm doing herbs, I tend to not chop it so fine because the last thing you want is to have that stuck between your um, teeth. So go ahead and try to uh, get it in a, in a good biteable size. Or else you'll be having to ask your friends, hey, do I have something in my teeth? Okay. 
So this is scallion. Put that in there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, yellow onions as well to this. Because remember, it's a tuna salad, but it's a fancy tuna salad. So we've got that. And then my onions. A half is plenty. I'm um, a quarter. A half of a half. So that is a quarter, I guess. And this you want to chop it up finely. If you have a chopper at home, it makes this process so much quick and easier. If you do not, it's okay. Again, be very careful with the knife. Um, when you're cooking in the kitchen, say you're doing it with the kids, you do the chopping. I remember being in the kitchen with my mom at the age of 10, 9 possibly, and I was already chopping. I don't know if that was a good idea, but you learn quick. Get that another few pass on this. Wonderful. And goes the onions, yellow onions. You can use purple sweet onions as well, whatever you prefer. Okay. We're going to mix this all together. Mm, if you could just see, like, how beautiful the coloring is. Okay. Because I tend to like a little bit of more lime juice and I hate to waste a beautiful lime. I'm going to add the other half as well. And you know, when you cook, it's okay to adjust recipes because your mood can depend how much certain ingredients you use, the weather, what you need. It's different when you're making this to go on top of a bread or a biscuit or a triscuit versus um, tuna melt where you need this not to be as runny, so you probably won't use the other half of the lime. And put it in between your sandwich, add a little bit of cheese in between. And that is your, your traditional comfort food. So here we have it, a delicious, healthy tuna salad that is going to keep your waist trim but make everyone happy. So we're going to do a little tasting. Mmm. Mmm. A little bit more salt. But here you have it. Tuna avocado salad. I hope you enjoy and I will catch you back here soon for another delicious meal, Cooking in Style with Sarasa. Avocado has vitamin E and potassium, which is crucial for normal heartbeat and helps regulate blood pressure. So, let's get back to the show. Welcome back. So, our last delicious, easy, simple recipe for today is the Sedona guacamole platter. I know that most of you guys have all had guacamole, but you probably haven't had it this particular style. I was so inspired by this particular um, style of having guacamole when I was in Sedona. And if you have not been, it is such an enchanting, beautiful spot that has um, this amazing high energy, which is what a lot of uh, tourists call the vortex. So I'm hoping that you are in my vortex right now enjoying this recipe. And I promise you it is easy to make, to do, to cook, to prepare. What I have going on on the stove right now is turkey bacon. You can use normal turkey uh, bacon, but I tend to like turkey because again, we want to eat healthy, look beautiful, and have delicious food. So this is turkey bacon cooking, frying. We're gonna turn this up. So I'm gonna let that. So what I'm going to do is actually start on the guacamole. And I hear it right now. Um, here we go. And you can pre-buy the guacamole or you can do it at home. 
I tend to like to pre-buy because you never know when you need the avocado. And if it's not quite ripe, it's actually harder to cook. So buy this at your local grocery store. The guacamole is already made. And then you can adjust the spice, the seasoning, whatever you like. So this particular platter, we're going to do three different styles of guacamole. And I know most of you probably have only had this particular way with your chips, but I am going to style this platter up. So we've got the guac going. Mm. Wow. Okay. And now, turning, because this calls for the third kind that I'm going to make for you. So we'll let that going. So as you see, I've got three different arrangements of pile going. So the first one I'm going to show you is you can make your guac sweet, delicious, tropical. So I've decided to add pineapple. And pineapple is great because it's your anti-inflammatory. So it's going to um, sweeten up your recipe, your dishes. But when you're using pineapple or honey, guess what you get to skip? Sugar. We don't need all that sugar in our system. Okay, so we've got the pineapple, strawberry, this is going to be such like a beautiful color combination and what a nice way to welcome your friends, guests, loved ones to a guacamole platter. So this particular one is going to be sweet and tropical and yummy. So again, get that all mixed up and drizzled over your first pile. Mm. It smell, the aroma of the pineapple and the strawberry it is sweetness in heaven. Okay. So the turkey bacon is ready to go. Shut that off. Put that aside and this smells just as delicious. You can be healthy can have and indulge in your food, but remember, make wise decisions. Okay. All right. So now, we've got the first one going. We're going to start on the second one, which is a buttery corn and pepper cilantro drizzle and lime. And that is going to take up a notch on your traditional guacamole. So on your corn, um, I will just season it with salt and pepper. And I have this little trick. When I do want to play up my butter, because it's going to be sweet, buttery, creamy corn, and this is a half a tablespoon of butter. Got to get this going. I love this stove because it's so kid friendly. Your kids can be in the kitchen cooking with you. There. And um, it only will heat up, but it's not hot. Pretty cool, huh? It only heats up when there's something on it. All right, so we've got that going. Corn. My favorite snack in the summertime is just corn, butter, salt, pepper. That's it. It is like the perfect afternoon, morning, night uh, snack. And this, and the reason I love cooking corn this way, because it cooks in seconds. Because we want to eat great, but we don't always have the time. And I'd say, you can go a little extra on the pepper. So, a half a tablespoon of pepper or more, depending on what you like. 
So here we have pepper, cinnamon, and sugar. And um, go ahead and use a little extra pepper for this because it's going to really play up the sweetness of the corn. Okay, so our corn is pretty much ready to go. Oh, my house phone is ringing. Let me just grab that for a second. Hmm, caller ID. That's the beautiful thing about that is that um, we can screen calls after a while. All right, so now we've got the corn. And, let me see, cilantro. Again, when you're cutting any herbs, do it in a bigger size than not because you, you don't want it stuck between your teeth. So we've got that and a squirt of lime. Beautiful. Mm, look at the coloring. So in this particular combination of um, the guac, I have the buttery corn with pepper, a little bit of ground cinnamon and sugar, cilantro and lime. Drizzle that over this combination. Mm. This is like a little trip that you're giving your, uh, your friends and family is guacamole does not have to be just avocado. Pile that up. I love my corn, so this is like my favorite summer snack. All right, and so the third, remember we started with the turkey bacon? So we're gonna grab this. Mmm. <sighs> I have a weakness for bacon. You know, I love eating healthy, grew up eating healthy because my mom was an amazing cook, and sometimes she would just open up the fridge, funny story, no lie, would open up the fridge and would just ask herself, talk to the vegetables, what am I going to make today? So then I realized, oh, my mom usually improvise. So amazing, amazing, amazing cook. So chop up your turkey bacon. And I'm going to add this with a combination of sunflower seed and cashew. So we're gonna give this a little extra crunch. Sunflower seed. Cashew and you are going to put your turkey bacon. Look at that, y'all. And now, add a little bit of sweetness to that. Honey. Voila. Sedona guacamole platter. Enjoy. Avocado has vitamin E and potassium, which is crucial for normal heartbeat and helps regulate blood pressure. Thank you for joining us on Cooking in Style with Sarasa. Stay healthy, stay beautiful, and we'll see you soon.